Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. It is time for the second round of tutorials, and there's a couple things I need to run through real quick first, though. Um, number one, this is going to be a little bit different. The first tutorial I did as a post-edit, and this one I am going to do just fly by the seat of my pants. I need you guys to tell me which way you like better. I can do them either way. This way is easier. The other way is a little more... Uh, clean cut so just let me know which style you like better and I will continue to do the rest of these in that manner number two this is a unit tutorial it is unit statistics and uses not a strategy guide I will get to the strategy guide later so this one is going to be a lot of numbers and uh, maybe a little bit of dry material but I think it is something that everybody can use and if you were curious about how any of the units stack up and compare to each other, this is going to be an excellent uh, video for you to watch, even though it will be a little longer. All right, number three goes directly to what we're talking about right here. The Tech 2 units vary widely. Um, it's not like Tech 1 where everything costs within one or two mass points of each other and they all basically have the same stats. This is an area where you've got to think about percentages a little bit, and I will try to make this as easy to understand as I can. And uh, you've got to look at mass equivalency, not necessarily numbers. So we will jump right into this and see how it goes. And uh, on that note, if you see anything that I missed, add it in the comments, and I will annotate it into the video or possibly redo this one depending on how badly I screwed it up. But I think I can do pretty well. All right, first up, we're going to talk about the main tanks. Uh, this is the Ilshiva, the Obsidian, the Pillar, and the Rhino, Seraphim, Aeon, UEF, and Cybran. Now, these guys vary widely. I mean, <laughs> nothing about them is the same, so we'll jump into them. The Ilshiva costs a whopping 360 mass, packs in 116 damage per second, and is very slow at only 2.5 speed. However, it has enormous range, 26 range. And you can see that here compared to the tanks, how much bigger that range really is. This is going to be something where you want to kite as long as possible. It has a high fire rate at three projectiles per second. This thing is a beast at wiping out Tech 1 units. When you're Seraphim, you don't have a whole lot of options at Tech 2. The Ilshiva is pretty much it for direct fire, but it is a dang good unit. Also packs in 2,500 health, which is a pretty high number. Moving on to the Aeon Obsidian. This one has stats kind of like a Tech 2 Percival, to be honest. It only has 20 range, though, is the problem. It is the shortest ranged Tech 2 tank. Uh, this thing packs in 480 damage per shot. That goes to 120 damage per second, but it only fires once every 4 seconds. This thing will one-hit kill any Tech 1 unit and does a pretty good job at demolishing anything. It has an insanely high damage stat. It also has 1,250 health on the actual tank and 1,500 health uh, in the shield. And that shield can actually have more health potential because it does regen at 2 health per second. It's basically like having a veterancy right off the bat and it does a really good job at letting this tank live a long time. However, it needs that help because it is a bit slow still at 2.6 speed, and it does have the low range. So even though the damage statistics and the health statistics are really good, it suffers from an acute lack of range, so you're going to need to get up close to use it, and uh, that can be a dangerous situation. Pillar is the cheap and spammy tank. I forgot to mention this is 360 mass, the same as the Ilshiva. The pillar has only 1500 health and only 53 damage, but it only costs 200 mass. And you can tell already that is nearly half the cost of an Ilshiva or an Obsidian. So when you take the actual mass cost into account, it has uh, pretty good stats mass for mass. Now this thing runs at 3 speed, which is by far the fastest Tech 2 um, main tank. And it does have a 23 range, same as the Rhino. 
This thing fires once every 1.3 seconds with two projectiles, and that totals out to 70 damage. And this thing does do a pretty good job against Tech 1 units. The Rhino is the Cybran's heavy tank. This thing costs 297 mass, um, 90, actually 100, yeah, 99 more than the Rhino does. And it has 1,900 health and 83 damage per second. One problem with the Rhino, though, is that it is the lowest tank to the ground, and it tends to fire into the terrain at some point. This thing is a beast at massacring Tech 1 units. It has an insanely high fire rate. Two projectiles every 0.6 seconds, totaling out to 50 damage. Um, but, uh, like I said, sometimes the terrain gets in the way of its awesomeness. So, this is especially, with Tech 2 units, you really have to take into consideration how the unit actually performs in combat. You can't draw everything from statistics, but it is good to know these. Now, real quickly, I'm just going to give you an idea of mass equivalency. Uh, the pillar, for instance, actually has the highest HP per mass, even though it only has 1,500 health. It has 7.5 mass. Um, 7.5 HP per mass. I'm sorry, the obsidian has the most. My bad. 7.5. The obsidian has 7.6. So you can see these two are actually uh, fairly similar in health stats, even though this one has so much less. The cost difference makes up for it. The Ilsheva has 6.9 health per mass, and the Rhino has 6.4. And then as far as the damage spread goes, we have 0.33 for both the Ilsheva and the Obsidian. And then that goes down to 0.28 for the Rhino and 0.27 for the Pillar. So you can see they're actually fairly close in stats when you consider the mass cost. Um, but uh, unit for unit, they do not stack up at all. All right, moving on to the assault tanks. These are the amphibious tanks for the factions. You always want to build these guys for land battles because the main assault tanks will have better stats than the amphibious tanks. The only things the amphibious tanks do better are, well, obviously they can cross water, so that's a huge one. And then secondly, they do have much, much higher speed. I think it is 4.3 for the um, for the blaze and the riptide, and then a slightly lower stat for the other two. I'm not exactly sure on the numbers on these because the unit database is not correct. Um, but uh, these two, the Cybern and the Seraphim, are slightly slower. Alrighty, stats wise, let me get my sheet out. The Wagner is the oddball out. It does not hover. It actually submerges. This is an incredibly stealthy unit. Um, you can use it for surprise attacks popping up out of the water. You can also use its high speed as a raiding unit. One other thing to think about is that this is the only hover tank or the only amphibious tank that actually has higher damage per mass than its assault tank counterpart. This thing does 100 damage per second. Um, and it, that is split between two guns, and then it also has three torpedo damage, which is basically useless. But it does let a small group of Wagners defend itself reasonably well against a couple of Tech 1 subs. Um, it does, however, have far, far less health than the Rhino does, which is its weakness. There is always a trade-off for the higher speed and the higher and the ability to pass through water. The Blaze does a pretty miserable 50 damage per second, but it does have the higher move speed. And uh, one thing about the Blaze is it does have an insanely high fire rate. So in some cases, the Blaze will actually do a slightly better job than the Obsidian at wiping out Tech 1 units. However, when you move to the Tech 2 stage, you really need the Obsidian because it is the beefier unit that can stand up to the attacks. The Yenzine has a similar front-loaded status to the Obsidian. Um, this little guy fires once every four seconds, but it only does 200 damage per shot. It has 50 damage per second. So this thing cannot one-hit kill a Tech 1 unit, 
So the first hit does not kill it, and then the second hit overkills it by a substantial amount. So this guy is not good at all at killing Tech 1. Then the Riptide has an insanely high fire rate, similar to the Blaze. And it does do a pretty good amount of damage, 90 damage per second, which is similar or equal to the Pillar. But it does have less um, less health and also less range than the Pillar does. These tanks are meant to be raiding units. They do provide supplemental help to uh, Navy, disregarding the Wagner, of course. If you get forced out of the water, you can build these guys out of a massive amount of Tech 2 factories and hopefully fight your way back into the water, but uh, that is a last-ditch effort. Moving on to the Flak. The Flak is essentially the same for all the factions. There is one major difference that I'll talk about in just a second, but let's hit the main stats. These guys, um, they all have the same firing pattern, the same projectile speed, the same area of effect, and roughly the same damage. So if you're building flak versus gunships, there really isn't one that is better over the others. Just build them, and these things will massacre the faces off of gunships. And they also obliterate Tech 1 Air, no contest at all. You will lose... Do not fly Tech 1 Air over these things. You will lose massive amounts of interceptors. The difference is Aeon and Seraphim can hover, which is huge. These guys can cross the water. They can accompany your navy, and they also have a slightly higher movement speed to go with that. They have 3.6 move speed as, a as opposed to 2.9 and 2.8 for the landbound counterparts. So that's the only difference. Speed and hover on the Seraphim. And then these guys are landbound. All right, next up is the TAC missile launchers. These are the range units for Tech 2. These guys are what you use to break fire bases. And uh, they do have some very significant differences. Let's start with the Aeon Evensong. This guy, oh, one thing to mention too, these all have virtually identical damage. They all do about 60 damage per second you can round it out one of them uh, the viper has 61 if you round it up but uh effectively they all have 60 damage per second the differences in these are the characteristics of the actual attack missile um the even song has an enormous alpha strike 600 damage per missile the downside is it only fires once every 10 seconds so this thing absolutely sucks at breaking fire bases because a single TMD can defend against five or six of these things because they only fire once every 10 seconds. If you want to use them, you need to use the hold fire function right down here in the corner, set them to hold fire, target all of them, five, six, seven, eight, however many you need. And then after they are targeted, set them back to either ground fire or regular, whatever, and they will fire in one volley together. And that is how you overcome the enemy's tank missile defense. It takes a little more concentration. However, these guys, if you can get two or three of them, I mean, three of them does an 1,800 damage alpha strike. So you can take off, take out undefended targets really easily with these because they pack an enormous hit in that first strike. Then we have the Seraphim. This thing fires once every 6.7 seconds. It is substantially better than the Aeon, but still not the fastest firing. That totals out to 405 damage per shot. And uh, all of these things cost 200 mass as well, by the way. And they have roughly the same speed stats. UEF is a little bit better than either one of these. It fires uh, one projectile every five seconds for 300 damage total. This is where you're starting to get into the I can overwhelm tech defense now territory. These guys are fairly decent firebase breakers, but... The king of the firebase breaker belongs, that title belongs to the Viper. The Cybran Viper, it launches once every 3.3 seconds, which is insanely fast. In addition to that, it has these splitting tack missiles. Uh, when a tack missile gets shot down by TMD, it will split into three smaller tacks, which do less damage. And that means that you can eventually overwhelm a single TMD with a single Viper. And the Viper is cheaper 
than the TMD. This means that you will never, ever defeat a Cybern opponent who has gone Viper spam with TMD because you will have to invest three times as much mass in TMD to stop a Viper assault. The uh, only, uh, the only rule breaker on that one is the Aeon TMD, which sucks the entire missile inside without splitting it. But those things have very small uh, cover area, and uh, they aren't very efficient at stopping tacks. So you can still overwhelm those with Vipers if you have enough of them. Now you may ask, why does the Viper, why do the Cyburns get such an insanely, insanely strong tack missile? I cannot talk. Um, Cybern has the weakest shields, the weakest point defense, generally cannot turtle worth anything, and has a hard time breaking fire bases. And uh, the Viper gives them a superior tool to fight the other factions with. You can break fire bases with this thing, and uh, you really, really need this tool in order not to be run over by point defense creeps with the other factions. You can see right here, this uh, Cybern MML is slowly eating away at this TAC defense. It will eventually kill that TAC defense and then be free to bombard whatever is behind it. Alrighty, that wraps, that wraps up the TAC missile launchers. Next we have the range bots. This is something that only the Cybern and the UEF have. These guys are quite significantly different in stats, which I did not expect coming into this. Um, as far as speed goes, they both have a 3.6 run speed. That makes them pretty dang fast. And the other thing about them is they're enormously long range. Both of these outrange gun ACUs. The Aeon range upgrade has identical range to the Mongoose. Both have 35 the Hoplite at 37 even outranges the Aeon Commander. These guys have insanely long reach. The other thing about them is that they are front-loaded with a high alpha strike, good damage per second, but uh, they have a long reload time. The Hoplite only does 45 damage per second, but it is concentrated into a 180 damage blast that cycles once every four seconds. So the goal with this is to run in fire a shot, maybe two, as soon as the enemy takes notice, you run back and you have vastly superior uh, mobility in order to run away from any units that might be pursuing you. The Mongoose is roughly the same story, but it does significantly more damage. Um, the Hoplite has the range advantage, the Mongoose has the damage advantage. This thing has about 60 damage per second, and it also cycles a lot longer cycling speed. This thing is about seven seconds, and then it's two guns combined do 425 damage per cycle. So this is one where you can run in. It has a good area of effect as well. Run in, blast the ever-living daylights out of five or six Tech 1 units, and then run away again. Currently in Supreme Commander Balance, these guys are kind of weak. I don't see a whole lot of people building them, but they do have a reasonably good potential if you feel like babysitting them and microwing. Hoplites especially, paired with mobile stealth, which we'll talk about in just a minute, can pretty easily snipe off an ACU if you're not careful and not prepared for it. Mongeese, not so much, but still a viable option. All right, support units. We have mobile shields for UEF and Aeon. Seraphim is noticeably absent here. They have a Tech 3 mobile shield in the next tier, which we will talk about later. And Cybern has stealth. UEF has the cheaper shield mass-wise, but it does consume more power. This thing costs 120 mass and consumes 110 power. The Aeon shield, on the other hand, it costs 144 mass, 24 mass higher, but it only consumes 75 power, so that's kind of pick your poison. Um, the Aeon Shield has slightly smaller radius. You can see the difference in the size of the circle there, but it does have higher health, 3,800 health to the UEF's 3,500. The UEF has one or two extra range on its shield. So these guys are support units. They will provide cheap health 
for any units that they cover. Um, the Cybern, on the other hand, has a Deceiver. This guy, you can see the brown range circle right here. That is the stealth range. It will prevent radar from sighting any units inside this circle. This makes it an incredibly effective tool for raiding. Uh, you can use this to get units behind your enemy's base. Run buys, everything is possible with this unless he's actually got an air scout over your head or has a chancy contact with a, with a tank that's out that direction. He will never know what's coming for him until he gets Omni up. So those are the support units. Next up are special units. These are the last two we're going to talk about. UEF has the Sparky. Now this is a combat engineer. It has a riot gun on it that does 30 damage per second, I believe. Let me flip my page over here. Yes, 30 damage per second. Only has 18 range. But the upside of that is it is more than capable of defending itself against a couple of Tech 1 units. It can zap off enemy engineers, which may be in the area. And it can build and fire at the same time. So you can drop four or five of these into an area. The riot guns can help clear it out. You can throw up point defense. You can throw up whatever you want. This thing has a combat build suite, which means it can build offensive and defensive structures. Point defense, anti-air, torpedoes, attack defense, shields, artillery, and tack launchers. It cannot build factories or economy buildings, but it can reclaim. So this is a very handy unit to have around. You can supplement Navy with it. It does have the radar jamming ability. Um, you can supplement Navy with it since it is amphibious. You can reclaim with it. You can drop it into hot zones to snag up some of that reclaim that you left behind. You can use it to establish fire bases, whatever you need it for. This thing is a handy and I am sad to say underused tool. Second special unit we have is the Fire Beetle. This is a nasty nasty creature similar to the Aeon Mercy but it is land bound this thing has an insanely high run speed of five very fast unit very maneuverable and then it has a whopping 4.5 area of effect area of effect blast that does 3500 damage this thing is insane just a couple of them can take out an ACU no problemo. You can see the size of the blast right there. Um, these guys are basically a walking tack missile. You can take out, they only do about half the damage, but you can take out a Tech 2 mass extractor and all four storages with one fire beetle. You can stick them on a transport with some stealth and do a fire beetle drop. You can run them in with stealth to take out important targets. The only problem with them is they only have 300 health. So they do die easily but they do a ton of damage. I'm going to do a little, area, a little area attack here and see if it will actually explode. I believe it will. There it goes. Blast and shockwave. Awesome little tool to make people angry at you. Alrighty, guys, that is going to wrap up the Tech 2 phase. Please tell me what you thought of this video. Uh, let me know what you think of the style as opposed to the Tech 1. And also anything I missed, dump it in the comments. I will be sure to notice. Alrighty, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the Tech 3 video.